good to come your way um we are glad to come to your house to your homes with the word of god um this is not just normal preaching that you hear but this is a reflection that we bring into you um trust you are all doing well by the grace of god and uh we we are praying and trusting god that we will go through this season together this is really a difficult time this is really a time that we are really having to really go to god and ask god for his grace to guide us through this season our text for today is john chapter 9 verse 1 to 41 but for the purpose of time I'm going to read from verse 1 to 12, and I will encourage you after the, the, the reflection that you can read by yourself, and um, um, you can read all the verses by yourself. So I'll read. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but that happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who were formerly seeing him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Shiloham and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know. He said, this scripture is another conversation Jesus had, a transformative one, of course. Last week, we saw the conversation Jesus had with the Samaritan woman. And we saw how Jesus talked about life. And today, we are talking about the blind man that was born blind. Um, and how the Jews and the Pharisees talk about the healing. So, and in fact, we can actually say that this miracle, this story that is recorded, is really not so much focused on the miracle as it is focused on the response of the miracle, how people reacted to the miracle. Let us remind ourselves, God is still in miracle business. God still does miracle in our days and time. But this story reminds us of various responses that came. In our generation, in our day and time today, we still experience different forms of blindness. But this text is about physical blindness. You know, some may experience forms of blindness as a result of aging. Some may experience forms of visual challenges in, in, in life. And for some others, they are born blind. An example is given of Neil Habison, who was colorblind. Neil Habison writes about himself that I was completely colorblind. But thanks to device attached to his head, I can now hear color, which allows him to experience an element that was invincible. So he was 
grateful for the device, for the scientific device that was given to him because that allows him to be able to see color, not physically, but to hear the sounds of the color. But this degree of sight for him is very important and he's really grateful for this degree of sight. In our story today, the degree of sight is extraordinary and this only comes by through amazing grace. We see in the text that the man was physically born blind and Jesus gave him orders, go and wash yourself your eyes and you will be made whole. And he went and he received physical sight. He received his sight. And so the only way we can receive this healing actually comes from, from this amazing grace of God that can help us in those dealing with physical challenges, physical and visual challenges. Our focus also moves to how much people think about blindness. Blindness in, our, in the days in the, for the Israelites was associated with sin. Blindness was also associated with suffering. And also blindness was also associated with darkness. The Israelites, Jesus himself even asked, and from the beginning of the text said that this man was not born blind because he sinned. We see in the book of Exodus how God said about himself that he will visit the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generations. So the Israelites already know that people can receive blindness, they can suffer because of the sins of their fathers. But Jesus reminds us that this is a new kingdom, this is a new grace that God is giving, and this has no connection with the sin of the fathers. And in this story, still the, the, the Jews and the, and the Pharisees had questions, they had questions about who sinned about who is the source of this, the predicament that this man is going through. We see that in our day and time, in our current situation, where we have the, the challenge of the coronavirus, it is very obvious that many people are turning and asking that what happened? Who sinned? Is it a result of sin? Is it a result of punishment? Is God punishing us? Is it a result of somebody's negligence? We as human beings, we are forced to, to come to the point of finding the cause and the, and, the, and the reasons for the effects that we see in our society today. So instead of asking the origin of sin, asking the origin of the problem and and finding ways that we can, we can criticize others, um, this text reminds us to see with a different angle. Jesus shifts the conversation and reminds them that they are dealing with spiritual blindness. What form of spiritual blindness do we see in our day and time? For the Jews, they could not reconcile the fact that this man was born blind. The Pharisees could not reconcile the fact that this man was healed on the Sabbath day. So they had their own theology about how God works. They had their own theology about who needs to suffer and who, need, who does not. But Jesus extends this grace this amazing grace that he extends, and he extends this grace to the blind man. And the blind man receives the grace. He actually called him Jesus. He actually calls him prophet. He calls him God. He kneels down and worships him. We see in the text we read that 
He was not interested in the dialogue that was happening. He was interested about the experience that he had. In our day and in time, sometimes we may not have the full picture of how to explain the providence and the will of God in our life. But what we can do is to explain and share our personal experiences. Like this man who was born by, he shared his personal experience that he had with God. As we go into our reflections today, I want us to think about ways that we can embrace new theology, ways that we can embrace new mysteries of our faith. That God is present in and among us even though bad things happen. Can we thank God for the good things in our life without blaming others for the bad things? Whatever that happens in our life, how much is the, are we challenged to, to see beyond the status quo? Are we willing to sacrifice in order to bring about the kingdom of God? Are we willing to think in new creative ways? People of God, God is speaking to us today that the amazing grace is still available for every form of spiritual blindness. We are surrounded by spiritual blindness. Social distancing does not solve the problem of spiritual blindness. When we are connected together in the spirit, when we pray for each other, when we pray for others, those are the ways we can be able to bring sight and light to the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. Today, God is calling us to rethink, to see carefully that in what ways have we been blinded. And when we come to him, he will always extend this amazing grace, but it doesn't end there. When we have that experience, we are called upon to share these experiences to others. And this is what will transform our world and make our world a better place. God bless you and stay blessed. We love you. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for everything that is going on around us. Like the blind man said, I was blind, but now I can see. Lord, we acknowledge so much spiritual blindness in our world today. We pray the Lord, let our spiritual eyes be open. Help us to find new ways and creative ways that we can extend love, we can extend favor, we can extend your grace and your light to others. Please be with us, even in this difficult time. In Jesus' name, amen. Seek out.